Hi, I'm Josh Pettit with MP Systems, General Foreman for Branch 7. I use this as a visual aid for my crew members. I Every wire pole, I'll draw everything on the board for the guys, um, from the hot cross scenes to where the guard structures are, um, main, main, main talking points to where individuals are, where we're sagging, where we're soft siding, who's following the sock. I find it to be a good tool to use with the group, knowing that they have already been out there, worked on the line numerous times, but this brings everything all back home here and they, we can stand here in front of the board and talk about main key points of the wire pole, bring up small items that I may have forgotten during the conversation, um, open up the room for, for everybody to have voice their opinions and bring up anything that has been missed. Um, besides using the whiteboard, there's also the pre-wire pulling plan that I have to do. It's an electronic version. Uh, it's something that I fill in all the blanks for. It's a check on my behalf to make sure all my bases are covered. Once I complete that, it's uh, sent off to my superintendent and depending on the severity of the wire pull from hot crossings, railroads, freeways, and then it moves up the chain from there and um, all the way up to a call manager to make sure it's numerous. It's checked numerous times over and um, that all the bases are covered. It's a peer check that I appreciate and it helps us successfully pull wire in and without incident. Within your wire pulling plan, there's a communication checklist where you use with yourself for yourself and your crew members. Um, within that checklist, um, it talks about uh, being on the correct radio station, making sure all equipment's been inspected prior to use. Um, everyone's on the same page, know their positions throughout the wire pole and their duties. Within that, it helps ensure that the wire pole goes successfully, everybody knows their duties throughout the day and understands their responsibilities. Rohan, do you got a copy? At all of our road crossings and hot crossings, during our wire, before our wire pole, we install guard structures, whether it be wood guard structures, bat wings, uh, temporary bucket trucks. Uh, in order, the reason to do that is to protect the, protect the public and the roadway if there's a possibility if the wire would fail. Other things we do with our hot crossings is we do reach out to our local utilities and ask them if there's a possibility if it can be de-energized and backfed. Some situations it's possible, in this situation it was not. We were able to achieve a non-reclose or a one-shot and we covered up the line as well. Also with our road crossings and hot crossings, we install grounded travelers at all these locations. It's another protection for our workers and the public in case the wire would come to the ground, we would have a malfunction that the wire would be shorted out in the quickest fashion as possible. Here we have our wire pulling end, our B-groove end. Uh, with all of our wire setups, we install engineered EPZ mats. Um, they're all bonded together with uh, bonds so that they all put themselves at the same potential. But there would be, what we're trying to achieve here is if there's a malfunction, the wire would come down, become energized for whatever reason, or if there's high induction. That puts us at the same potential as the wire we're working on. Um, when we do set these up, we do have to take precaution. We install snow fence, double barricaded, one tight to it, and one away from it three or four feet. That keeps us on the EPZ pad itself and it keeps the public away from the EPZ pad if someone would approach. When we do access on and off our EPZ pad, we use an isolation step. So that way when you're stepping off the EPZ pad, there's that step potential between you and the EPZ setup itself. Four. these steps and using your wire pull safety plan and a communication checklist will ensure you to have a safe and successful wire pull.